30 podcast. You're in the right place. I'm glad you're here. Hi, guys. It's Lindsay Krista. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much. You're new to Almost 30. What should we tell them about Almost 30 for um, now? We're not 30. That's pretty much all you need to know. <laughs> we're <laughs> your best friends. Truth. We're your guides. We're just some gals that are on a mission to make you feel less alone and yeah. help you along your evolution wherever in that evolution you are. Yeah, truly. And if you've listened since the beginning... You've seen the evolution. Yes. Quite literally. The glow up is real. <laughs> and the glow up is is very real. We started on our closet floors. Uh, I think we started talking about just kind of like, you know, kind of shocking things that happened in our 20s, which I'm, I'm sure a lot of you can relate to. And then, uh, yeah, got hip to kind of what our souls really mm-hmm. wanted to talk about. And it's been uh, really fun. And fun we've got cover new art. pod cover art, which we're really excited about. Oh, yeah. Do you guys like it? We've got a new cover art. We're really excited. We're no longer cartoon girls. I feel like the world is a cartoon girl <laughs> podcast. The world of podcasting is all cartoon girls right now, which is beautiful. I didn't know how many drawings of myself there could be. Honestly. Like we have in our studio, which is so beautiful, a painting that Danny oh. of Daisy LA did. And... Um, you have boobs. I have boobs. In the the <laughs> well, what's weird, I, what I was going to say is I did this um, Instagram live recently yeah. and they did a drawing of me to promote the live. Oh, dude. I was. I knew what unwell. you were thinking. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit, I have to share this because, you know, we're like, I was cool like with the brand. Everyone. But I was like, who is that? Who are we? I was <laughs> rotund. <laughs> I had there was, like not, there was not an angle. <laughs> On my body. I was all curve with my face, my cheeks. It was like I had no chin. I was like, wait, I've, this is, it was wild. Um, It was wild, but whatever. I No approval process fuck. on it's that. It's a fucking cartoon. So yeah, it was no approval process, but our new cover art is very intentional. We wanted to have, you know, our faces in it as much as we could. Um, and we wanted it to feel like an up level of us with our yeah. new branding, with our new site that we launched in January. So this is all our new colors. There's actually a new logo. That's a new almost 30 logo. It has um, similarity to similarity to the other logo that we had, but it's just like a fresher version. Yeah. I love that whole process of the rebrand. It did kind of mm-hmm. feel like, you know, if, if you're out there and you have either a brand or a business or you're a part of a brand or business, like there is kind of a new life that's injected into it when you do, when you involve yourself in that process that I found really fun. There were stressful times, but it was really, really fun. And just, I don't know. I feel like it's inspiring new content, new things we're doing. Mm -hmm. Just felt good. Yeah. It's like another aspect of you that you feel proud of. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, I feel proud of of this part and I feel proud of this like experience and it feels good to feel proud of yourself. Yes. I didn't do anything related to the website really, but <laughs> it's something I feel proud of. Yeah, totally. Um, today's interview. I'm just incredibly mm-hmm. excited about. It's a long one. It's, it's a, a 90 minute eight. boy. We used to do <laughs> 90 minute boys a long time ago and now we have only been doing 60 minute boys. Mm-hmm. It's a long one. This is a 90, so we'll make this intro a little bit shorter, but we're so we're so excited to have our friend Jordan Younger on the pod. Which is weird because I had the ping to have her back on maybe two months ago. Jordan was on the show four years ago, maybe four and a half years ago when we first, first launched, so who knows what was happening. <laughs> Uh, we were in some random studio that, you know, we were able to use for free because we promoted them. It was very weird. And yeah, we've changed a lot since then. She's changed a lot since then. And when we scheduled this, we didn't really have the intention of talking about what we talked about at the end of this conversation, which was about an article that had recently been um, shared where Jordan was like made the focus um, incorrectly and unjustly so we talked a lot about that in the situation and then we talked a lot about really like her life update so it's a really great conversation and I felt like a really necessary one mm-hmm. yeah I was just um we've seen a lot of people in the public eye in that way um be kind of dragged and um misquoted and just misrepresented and I was just really proud of her for the way in which she stood up for herself her community um and really drew a line in the sand around you know the media doing this especially to women so 
I just felt like I'm like, oh, this is powerful. You and I talked about it. We're like, this this is definitely a powerful moment, not only for Jordan, but just the way in which journalism and media has been working Mm -hmm. the last however many years, especially in the last like four or five years. So I'm just excited to see how this will perhaps change things over time. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah, there's really powerful, amazing journalists that are doing great things. And then there's also the beast, you know, and you have to feed the beast with whatever salacious article that will get clicks on whatever topic. And, you know, it's unfortunate that Jordan was targeted in this. And, yeah, we've had another dear friend of ours this year that was targeted in an article that was just completely ridiculous and um, super cynical and just really outdated. All of the all of sort of the rhetoric around it is just super old paradigm. Yeah. And I think something that we're moving beyond. And I've always said people can make whatever point they want to make about whatever they want to talk about without bringing someone down. You don't need to use someone else as an excuse to say what you want to say, whether that's good or bad. You can say whatever it is that you want to say by just saying it. And I think people have given their power away for so long that we're so used to that. We're so used to being like, did you see this? Da, 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 da. This person said this. What do you think about this? And just continually finding ways to give our power away. And we are powerful enough to just say what we want to say, whatever that is. And it's also just a, a reminder that like to your, to that point, like we can also question things and think for ourselves (laughs) and like gather information and do our own research and then make the best decision for us Mm -hmm. just so long as it doesn't hurt other people. Um, because I think with social media now, even just the intensity of the news, it's like, that's the first place we go to know what to think or how to think. And it's like, Oh wait, no, (laughs) no, no, no. But these media platforms know that Mm -hmm. they know that. And so they are going to use a headline for instance, to like evoke an emotion so that you click and that you Mm -hmm. feel a certain way. And yeah, it's all, um, it's more calculated than you think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's also like tall poppy syndrome. It's like this person is standing out. This person is being positive. This person is, um, taking a risk by living in joy. And when you take them down, it's like an example, like, oh, you don't want to be like her. She's currently living in joy. She has chronic illness, but she's choosing or she still struggles with it, but she's choosing to Mm -hmm. try and make the best of the situation. You guys, everyone reading, be careful. You don't want to stand out. You don't want to shine bright. You don't want to, you know, be a positive person in the world because look what happens. You're going to get taken down. You're going to be made an example of. Yep. And that continues to happen. And um, yeah, that's part of it. The calculation. And it's just, again, the politicizing of everything. A fashion magazine doesn't need to be writing about freaking whatever the heck. You know, these are, I feel bad because these media outlets are now seeing how popular it's been to write about political related topics because of the recent elections and sort of everything that's been going on. And they're seeing how much clicks and money there is in that space. And now everything is made political because of that. And it really is part of what's made us be so divided is that we've kind of come to this realm of everything being in that way. Mm-hmm. And it's, yeah, it's it's really bad for our psyche. Completely. And I just think it's it's taking away from the ability for people to see other people's hearts, mm-hmm. you know, because it's like, but what do you believe in? What do you stand by? Yes. What, are your, what are you associated with? Ego. What's the label that you ego. stand by? The ego. And it's mm-hmm. like we're not seeing people's hearts mm-hmm. and able to like kind of discern from that place. Mm-hmm. And it's, yeah, it's really sad. Really, really sad. Yeah, and that, that's why, you know, I've said that people are starting to trust, you know, for better or for worse, influencers more, podcasters more, YouTubers more. And I'm not saying that everyone looks at every influencer or YouTuber, podcaster, whatever, and is like, I trust them for everything. But that's why there has been a digression away from traditional media and traditional news for information. And that's why people have felt unsure of who to trust and where to turn. And that's why they kind of turn to alternative outlets for information because they've realized that you can't really trust traditional media because it is so always in the same sort of rhetoric 
arena and then also very has its agenda, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. has its agenda and guises as it like it doesn't. And with yes. influencers, I think influencers could definitely have an agenda. Whoever the heck influencers. And, I, and when I say that, I mean like ever YouTube podcasters, whatever could definitely have an agenda, but it's not as guised as like a big media outlet. Yeah. Yeah. Money and power, baby. Money and power. Money and power. So <sighs> this is a a really good one. Again, it's a, it's a long one. So with Jordan, um, she has been blogging for years and years. She's sort of gone through various um, times where, you know, she's been the focus of a media attack, whether it was when she did a book called Breaking Vegan, where she decided that she no longer wanted to be vegan, or whether it was about Lyme disease or now about, you know, the current topic that she was written about now. And um, she is someone that is so deeply heart centered, someone that is so deeply in integrity. She is very loving and kind and she's one of our dear friends. Um, And in this conversation, we talk about the celestial lifestyle, which is something that she's exploring and she's talking about um, more and more, which is a lifestyle of healing and wellness that she's been living on her own for the past couple years. And she's going to be sharing more tips and information about the celestial lifestyle soon. And then we talked about the media. Um, We talked about the media situation that happened most recently, which I also talked about on my stories recently that I feel very strongly about. Um, in a compassionate way as well, because I know that a mm-hmm. lot of the people that are the journalists are sort of, that's how they put food on the table is through uh, uh, living in this sort of paradigm. And I know that they had their own opinions on things, yeah. um, but just as they can share theirs on whatever platform, you know, this is how it goes. We can share ours on ours. Yeah, definitely. If you guys don't already follow Jordan, you can follow her at Balanced Blonde on Instagram. And then her blog and website is thebalancedblonde.com. And on there, on her blog, um, she has um, a post that she wrote, Taking a Stand Against the Media, Tearing Down Women. And so it just kind of gives, um, you know, even more of an insight into kind of her her thoughts and feelings in the wake of this. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, really, really out. beautiful. And as always, thank you guys for having an open mind and an open heart and for being a place where we can have beautiful conversations where we explore different topics and different things going on in the world in a way that helps, um, you know, really make sense of everything and feels productive and feels like we can share from our hearts. So we appreciate and love you. Um, and from an almost 30 perspective, membership is going amazing. So membership Mm -hmm. enrollment will open up again in a few months. We have amazing courses and uh, programs and apparel on almost30.com. With Podcast Pro, we help people launch, grow, and monetize podcasts. And we are opening up coaching in April. So in April, if you are signed up for the Podcast Pro mail list, you'll be on the mailing list to have a link for coaching call availability be sent once a month. So we have four calls Mm -hmm. a month for one hour for very specific people on podcasting, which are going to be very special. So make sure you're signed up for the Podcast Pro email list by going to almost30.com and we will hook you up there. Yeah. Thank you guys for listening. Share this episode with a friend if you think it will resonate and really any other episode that we have that really helps us out a lot. Make sure you subscribe so that you we are in your inbox every Tuesday and Thursday. And we just thank you. We'll see you on the other side. Yeah, we'll see you soon. We love you. I'm 30 now, and so many of our friends are like, oh, I'm just starting therapy. It's amazing. And I'm like, have fun. <laughs> I was doing it for 25 <laughs> years, and I, I recently have been taking wow. a break. But 25 years off and on for me, so. <laughs> yeah, the yeah, it is. It's like you sitting with your grandma. You feel, you can absorb how sad and how mis- and how just depressed she must be. And, and then you probably see that and you're like, oh, I don't want to feel that. I don't want to feel that yeah. with whoever's feeling yeah, it. Absolutely. Then I would have things that I that I would have to say and repeat like I was telling you guys over and over before I would go to sleep at night. I would pray and I was Jewish. So I don't know where this would come from, but I'd be <laughs> saying amen to God like over and over <laughs> and over and over. And my parents are like, you don't have to do this. I was like, I know. Was that a, um, that's hilarious. What did you learn about OCD I'm literally my sister is very similar to this where she would repeat things over and over was it like a response to something was it a I don't want to say trauma response but I'm just curious like how how you connected that in therapy yeah for me I mean what really helped was this therapist I think she helped my parents more Mm. than me to tell them she's actually fine 
There's nothing wrong with her. She's very sensitive and she feels very safe, safe enough in in her home with you guys to just be her authentic self. So just let her be her authentic self because she is sensitive and she is very different. And she does, you know, you could call them compulsions. But she saw in me so early that this was just a love for for everyone around me that was so deep. And now I know that I was very psychic. Mm -hmm. And so I was picking up on all these deeper layers of things. And at the time, I would have no clue. I wasn't raised to think about spirituality Mm -hmm. or to um, know what psychicness was. But I I think the problem was I could feel how other people were feeling. And I was just like, oh, God, this is so painful. So I developed all of these habits Mm -hmm. and routines and rituals. And I see them now, you know, a year after we've pretty much been in quarantine or whatever you want to call it, coming back up. So as I'm doing with my husband and like, are you mad at me? And he's like, if you ask me that one more time, (laughs) I will be mad. Um, God, Justin, wish I was wish I would ask him that. (laughs) (laughs) He'd be like, God, how cool she cares. I know. Actually, now that you mention it, exactly. Thank God you finally asked me. (laughs) I'm fucking pissed. (laughs) It's always scary when he does say, "Well, that that would scare me too." Yes, I am, and I was like, No, I I was just asking because I because I knew you weren't. Like that's the whole. (laughs) Oh my god! I was asking because I knew you weren't. (laughs) Yeah. Oh my god! Do you think you're picking up something, or do you think you're just noticing fluctuations in mood? Or I think I just have a lot of anxiety, and I pick up I pick up on things. He's a highly sensitive person. Mm -hmm. My sensitive Leo, Pisces Moon husband. Mm -hmm. So I pick up on everything. Mm -hmm. So whatever he brings home from work. I feel yeah. and then and then he he tells me it's just been a hard day I'm not mad at you so yeah all the joys of marriage yeah. <laughs> that's always so yeah I, I relate to that a lot where it's like do you also have the propensity to want to like fix it help him like is that part of kind of your empathetic being where you want to like fix things and have Be like purpose filled in that way. Definitely. I feel like I would do anything to help him. And most of the time, as it is with all humans, all we can really do is hold space for the other person. Jonathan just needs to come home, eat dinner, decompress for like an hour. And he's usually completely fine where I work from home. There's Mm -hmm. no, you know, the decompressing thing is very different. Yes. You're like, I can't wait till he gets home. And then he gets home and you're just like, (laughs) yeah. (laughs) And he intermittent fasts all day. So his only meal is dinner. What is that one called? It's called OMAD. OMAD. Is he doing that? He doesn't call it that. You know, he just kind of like did it in his own way. But yes, yes, he's, he thrives that way. He eats a huge dinner around seven every night. And that's it? That's it. He doesn't even drink coffee most of the time. How does he feel? He feels amazing. I mean, he's vegan, and that's, like, one of the things I'm most proud of. Yes. Wow. Because that was the wow. about a year and a half ago now, and he feels amazing. He's healthy. He's an Iron Man. He's, he blows me away, so. Yeah. Oh, my God. He feels good. Mm. We were just saying before we hopped on that the last time Jordan was on the podcast, you were coming to the interview from one of your, like, first dates with Jonathan which is so crazy isn't it crazy (laughs) I was thinking about it on the drive over (laughs) here thinking okay that must have been four and a half yeah four and a half and I was just I didn't know about podcasts I was very late and I was like you guys I'm so sorry you thought it was like just a hang yeah (laughs) it's fine we only have 30 minutes left or whatever I was like oh god I felt terrible and I remember every detail honestly because I have a crazy memory that way but I was making pancakes with Jonathan in the morning and then I came here did that podcast with you guys before I had a podcast wow and you guys have just paved the way for Mm. so many people to start podcasts and have these beautiful conversations I think about that constantly thank so you that was a fun That's conversation a Wait, so we were talking about breaking vegan was it yeah was that in the new was that like a deal then well, was it four and a half years ago or was that like that beyond? was like seven years ago okay. but it was my story quote unquote for 
many years after that until I decided that that wasn't my story right. anymore. I just hit a point where I just couldn't talk about it anymore. I mean, we can talk about it now. Yeah. But where I was just like, that's not me. Yeah. I was 22 when that all went down. I wrote a book about it when I was 23 that I'm proud of. And I hope it helped people. I think it did. I know it did. Mm -hmm. But it's just not who I am anymore. Mm -hmm. And that the media at the time really capitalized on that story to just make a huge spin on veganism veganism almost killed me was the headline mm -hmm. and that never happened so it was you know I look back on it now as like whoa that was a whirlwind that was very difficult I don't miss it and I'm really proud of stepping out of that story but yeah and that's for sure what we talked about the first time because that was just yeah the thing so for people that don't know just just to fill them in so you were vegan before that and then when were you, you wrote the blonde this book, vegan was that your name yeah I yeah. was the blonde, blonde vegan, vegan and mm -hmm. then wrote this book and there was like an uproar because you were no longer vegan yep I so vegan community. even mm -hmm. before I wrote the book there was an uproar wow. I was the blonde vegan and it is funny like <laughs> we can just the labels are funny we can definitely like, laugh about it and we live beyond our yeah I because know. also now everyone's like <laughs> like everyone now is like <laughs> Yeah, of course. Vegan, like, I'm not thinking vegan. of my first. People can do whatever they want. Yes. My first screen name. I'm like, I'm no longer a master shopper. Okay. Yes. Oh my God. That's <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's I like love, that though. Mm -hmm. I love the screen names. We could talk about screen names all because day. It is I, like Well, that. I was saying it's just, it's, I've said this to you in person. It's just so ahead of its time. If this book came out now, people would be like, thank God. Right. We didn't like that way of eating anyways. Thank God. Like, you know, people are very people are sort of have swung the other way where they're not super supportive of veganism in the same way. Right. People are more about being balanced, I guess, or being intuitive. And so it just really was like very ahead of its time. Yeah, it was ahead of its time. And I find that I yes. tend to do things same. that way because here I am now vegan, celestial diet. Mm -hmm. And people are very, like you said, down on anything that could be even perceived as restrictive or labeled and I'm all about non-restrictive in every single way and intuitive eating but yeah when I was talking about intuitive eating it was hated on I'm talking about veganism now and everybody's like no it should be intuitive and it's just like you know what you just can't please everybody yeah but it's yeah. also too with the intuitive it's like just people are like so good at regurgitating buzzwords because like with the intuitive, and I've said this before, it's like people's it, sense of intuitive is so different. And it's actually very hard to intuitive eat if you've spent your whole life not listening to your body's cues. Right. And it actually takes a lot more. It's actually not about the food or the eating. It's actually more about your emotional relationship with food than anything or emotional and habitual way of eating food because intuitive eating is like, so say that you've had to ignore your intuitive cues your whole life. You've never felt like you could nourish yourself. You always felt like you were on a diet. There's so many different things that kind of keep people from intuitive eating. So it's really not that easy for most people. But everyone's like, you should intuitive eat. Everyone should intuitive eat. It's like, of course. Right. Of course. And, and my whole thing, I totally agree with you, is that in order to truly eat intuitively, I think a lot of people should first find... Um, some kind of way to cleanse their body. And I use that word very lightly because there's a million different <laughs> types of cleanses that include I'm like the master food. cleanse, Jordan. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. honestly. Uh, lemon and cleanse maple and, and detox. Yeah, exactly. Tell me more. Exactly. <laughs> so a cleanse could You're be like, any, be very careful. <laughs> right. Do any type of cleanse that you want. I've seen people achieve this with Whole30. I've seen them achieve it mm. with more of a vegan diet or even just finding like there's all these healthy cleansing centers that that I've gone to, I think I've explored all of them, um, mm -hmm. if anybody has questions. But from there, I find it so much easier for people to eat intuitively because they balance their gut microbiome. Mm -hmm. yes. They are not having these ravenous sugar cravings that come from a deeper place. And when you're not feeling well mm -hmm. and you're sick mm -hmm. and tired and you might have parasites, chronic illness, mold, all these things that I personally have dealt with, very hard to eat intuitively very hard I remember when I first stopped being vegan and thought that I was eating intuitively 
and I was just eating terribly <laughs> and I felt very <laughs> sick what all the time. <laughs> oh my God. I was well, I'm laughing because I, I think we were kind of doing keto stuff at the same yeah. time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, yo, why am I a puffball? Right. I was like, yo, you're eating like two full avocados a day. You're having a whole jar of nut butter. Like what the fuck oh, was I you doing? You know I gained 40 pounds. <laughs> <Yes>. like, <laughs> I gained 40 pounds in six months. Oh. It was traumatizing. <laughs> what? And I'm laughing just because it's so absurd. It's absurd. <laughs> and taking the weight out of it, because I could care less yes. about the number on the scale, I felt terrible. Same. I yeah. had cystic acne. I mm. was Ugh. running a marathon and gaining weight with every, every um, you know, extra mile that I would add to my routine. It was very strange. So, yes, I was eating keto like you. And I felt like if it's keto, I can eat anything. And uh-huh. there was a lot of bacon, burgers, eggs, tons of oil, <laughs> um, pizza, you know. Pizza, it's pizza's so not, not you. keto, but, you know, <laughs> all the fats. Uh, it's just not me. Yes. And, it's, you know, what's sad and funny is that, like, that couldn't have been further from intuitive. Yeah. But that way of eating, I would say, mm. is super celebrated right now because mm. it's like, um, you know, it's more accepted, I think, than mm-hmm. these fringe ways of life that, that I've mm-hmm. had to start living because of healing from chronic illness, right. which I totally recognize is not for everybody, but it's so freeing and it's so liberating and it's my hugest passion. Mm-hmm. So it works for me. Yeah. It's so interesting to think about, yeah, the word intuitive and then just how, I don't know if it's like sometimes brands. So keto has a bunch of brands that could, you know, benefit off of people kind of hopping on that train. But it's like selling, selling it as intuitive eating, but then the capitalism rushes in and like all of these brands rush in and people forget that this might not be good for their own body. Exactly. You know, so Mm -hmm. it's like there's so much buzz around us that we cannot tune into our own like personal (laughs) wi-fi on Mm -hmm. on that end um yeah i mean think about how most of our entire lives have been giving our power away in a lot of ways and Mm -hmm. think about how much we've given our power away as it relates to our diet every single one of us has done a crazy silly diet most of us have been i mean there's nothing that people try and have people tell them what to do more than how much people try and have other people tell them how to eat. Yeah, exactly. That is why people online are so big in nutrition and like Mm -hmm. eating because they're like, tell me what to eat. Tell me when to eat it. Like when people do what I eat in a day is like, which are totally fine. People love those because they're like, okay, this is how I'm going to eat. Like it is very hard after your entire life to connect back to what is intuitive eating. Yeah, it's very hard. And I think there's that way I think for me mine has been like has to be more in therapy it has to be more therapeutic approach I have to do a lot of untangling I have to do a lot of like digging back into my childhood and my life and really relearn and rethink about the ways where I've been told I shouldn't nourish myself I've been told that I don't deserve to eat or whatever the things are and yeah and so I just I'm happy that that's that is a a trend. I don't think it's a trend. I'm happy that that is coming on board because I think it's definitely the best way to eat. But I just think that it's harder than people think. And I think a lot of people that are teaching it are people that have maybe not had had that as their main issue around food and diet their whole life and are kind of teaching it as if everyone should intuitively know. But I don't think most people know how to tap into their food body intuition. I completely agree. That is the passion behind what I recently created, the Celestial Diet, Mm -hmm. which I still haven't really shared what it is because of a lot of reasons, but I'll talk about it here. Um, We can break some of the details here, but it's very much because people want to know because I've been talking about it. Well, what can I eat on the Celestial Diet and what can I not eat? And I'll direct message people back and say, that's not what this is about because you can eat whatever you want. And I'm never in the business of telling people Mm -hmm. what to eat and what not to eat. So the celestial diet ultimately is the most intuitive way of approaching eating, which is going to look different for everybody. Mm -hmm. So I hope that it's predominantly plant-based, that it's low in inflammatory oils, that it's alcohol-free, that we're not shoveling caffeine into our bodies. A healthy cup of coffee every day is fine. It brings me immense joy. Mm -hmm. But the celestial diet is is something that I've found to keep my channel pure, to channel, 
the light beings that we all love to talk about and angels and ancestors. And I just want to help people feel good, not by telling them what to eat, but telling them how to tap back into that intuition exactly the way that you're talking about. So if it takes like a seven day cleanse per se of just eating really well, really pure whole foods from the earth, then that's exciting to me because I've watched people's lives transform countless times, Mm. including my own. But it's not about like, this is what you're going to eat today and this is what you're not going to eat and Mm. there's no dessert and blah, blah, blah. Because I think a healthy, intuitive lifestyle is going to look different for every single person. Mm -hmm. And that's something that we have to remember also at every stage of life. So you, obviously from your experience, you've designed this, but then also have you like kind of channeled through aspects of what this diet looks like and are there lifestyle components as well what do you think about changing the word diet (laughs) i know it's like almost like diet isn't the word should we just call it the celestial lifestyle yes i I think i feel like this has come to me a few times diet the word comes from the word diete diete which is yeah like a means something it means daily no i'm making it up it means something. Um, tell me what diete means. Diet because what I try to tell people, diet. because people get really triggered by the word diet, and I sure. don't blame them. It, um, it means something. It's like Latin for. It's from diete, which is from the verb. Reminds me of a dieta, which reminds right. me of Oh, it means medicine. way of life. Yes, same. Mm-hmm. Hmm. A way of life. See, that's what I was going to say. So when I go back to the root of the definition of the word diet, it's very much how a species eats, how they how they Mm. feed themselves, nourish themselves. That's why I. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) well, (laughs) there could be. (laughs) And and regardless of whether it's the celestial diet or the celestial lifestyle, it is a lifestyle and there are lifestyle components. And it has been totally channeled to answer your question. And that's why I've given it space to come through because it keeps changing. And now I'm like, oh, there's meditations as a part of this. That's exciting. And it's much more teaching people how to awaken and heal using food as a component, but also using these lifestyle practices, meditations, um, like shedding spiritual weight, which is something Mm. that I'm really, really passionate about because I've watched it Mm. transform in my own bodies. And I would even say in your bodies, like, Mm -hmm. you know, not to be too forward, but like so many people that I see going through this evolve awakening period. And this could be it. This is something that just happens. People's faces shape shift. Mm -hmm. And it's not about losing weight. You could lose 20 pounds of spiritual weight and be the same weight that you are. It's like an aura. Mm -hmm. And I have so much compassion for the people in my community and our communities who are actually struggling with weight, who are holding on to emotional issues. And from 25 years of therapy, I do know what that feels like Mm -hmm. and my ups and downs with food and lifestyle and anxiety. So, you know what? I think here on this podcast, you guys have convinced me this is the celestial lifestyle. It really is. And this is the second time this has come up this week Mm -hmm. with trusted, intuitive people. So It's a lifestyle. Okay, we're changing it. It's good. I'm excited. Which is so funny because I, when I was with my first deck, I told you this, but my first deck was celestial. Yeah. My Mm -hmm. first deck Mm -hmm. was celestial. And then I was like, oh, that's not a fit. Like when the art kind of, when I was like working with the art, I'm like, oh, it's not that. But like you it's know actually why? Not it's because we channel from the same place. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, I yes. know we do. Yes. We're so similar, but it's yet so, so different yes. in the most beautiful ways. But I'm not surprised at all. I know. and that it's that But word. it's amazing. I'm like, oh, perfect. That's yours. Like, mm-hmm. I was yeah. like, oh, that's your name. It comes like, somewhere. Yes, the, literally. The concept of big magic, you guys know mm-hmm. that yes. concept, is so real. So real. Mm-hmm. And the concept, so for anybody listening who doesn't know, is ideas float between people yes. especially people who are connected yes. and connected to the same life source yes i have written outlines for fictional books that i have walked away from because of focusing on other things and other people have written those books really I swear, one of them is a number one new york times bestseller Shut and i'm up. just like what <laughs> oh my god that's out now yeah 
And I've told, I know the author is amazing. I noticed that you follow him too. We'll just say he's the author of the Midnight Library. He's amazing. Oh, yeah. Cool. And, um, yeah, 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 yeah. Who is that? I'm not, his name is Matt Haig. Uh, yes. yes. I'm not saying the idea was the same. Mm-hmm. His idea was different and it's beautiful. But the idea was so similar. Mm-hmm. And I just want to know everything about wow. his process. That's Did so you go cool. into the Akashic Records? Like, I have so many questions wow. because it was so similar. Wow. That's like with, so cool. mm-hmm. yeah, a lot of, a lot of authors, you're like, that is what the detail and specificity of what you're writing is mm-hmm. not normal. Right. You know, and what you're channeling is like not normal. It's like, where is this even coming from? It's a world in it's and of itself. a world. The spiritual weight is so interesting. Yeah. And, and even like weight or I'm, I have an experience too with skin health and I know you mm-hmm. do too, where. Oh, I yeah. connected it so much to being able to be myself and say how I feel because I felt like me not, quote, speaking my truth, whether it was personally or publicly, was like heat trapped in my body. And I just saw it come out in my skin. Obviously, it's so layered. It was diet. It was drinking. Mm-hmm. It was sleep. It was so many things. But I felt like that was like the missing piece that I didn't understand. And once I started to do that, I just noticed such a difference. So I'd love Mm -hmm. to talk about like your connection between speaking your truth and then just what you felt body wise. I too, just on that Mm -hmm. before you, I, I I remember seeing Colette, the, have you seen Colette yet? No, you will. So Colette, the, um, Clary wellness, she's the medium. That's a facialist. You'll meet her. She's on. I've actually meant to connect you guys at some point, but I, when I saw her in Vancouver, it was like two or three years ago. And I had like a gobbler. I had literally had like a double, and it was because I was like, I had a double chin. And it was because I was like <laughs> swallowing back things I wanted to say. Oh, oh yeah. Wow. It was like the feeling of having things and stopping myself and having prejudgments for what I was going to say. Right. I kept judging what I was going to say. And so I kept swallowing it back. Yeah. And wow. now I just let it rip. Mm. Oh, God, that's mm. beautiful. That's hilarious. I mean, I have a lot to say about that. I have done that too Mm -hmm. and for me well it manifested in a lot of ways one big way for me was with my voice and people notice this because podcasts (laughs) you listen to the voice and my voice has evolved and changed and continues to the more comfortable that I become speaking my truth and I actually can't listen to my first 100 plus episodes probably more probably 200 plus (laughs) because um (laughs) I just don't know who that was talking and like I love that girl and she was so pushing back past so much fear and I was also made fun of for my voice a lot growing up because it's very high pitched and it's very California and I always felt like I could say the most intelligent thing and someone would still laugh and Mm. so I would always like I didn't like speaking in class my whole face would get red because I was just like Again, some person is going to say something and I'm so proud of myself because for the last four or five years, being more in the public eye and having a podcast, I've had to push past that, clear that throat chakra block, Mm -hmm. which is still a daily practice. These are like lifelong lessons. So not only was it manifesting in my voice, it was also manifesting in my skin and this spiritual weight that we talk about. So I fully had full body hives. Talk about heat. Talk about pitta and yes. Ayurveda. And the things I've done for four years to eliminate that heat. That overheated quality of totally not living on this earth. Just packing so much in. And realizing I just, especially as a reflector. And I know I bring that up a lot. Like taking on every single person's emotions that I've ever met and learning to release that first through plant medicine and then through these dark night of the soul healings that I've done from water fasting to um, finding my own level of kundalini meditations that can bring me to these higher realms, which would make you think that I wasn't as grounded, but that's what grounds me. Mm. because then I feel like myself again Mm -hmm. and then I can speak and then I can be proud of my voice that's coming out um which is kind of a first for me so that even though I've been podcasting and whatnot it's only been like six months to a year 
that people will really say your voice sounds strong Mm -hmm. and that means that you sound like you're healing and all of it all of it it means energy it means vitality and it reflects also in the body Mm -hmm. and that's why my face has Mm (laughs) shape-shifted which we can talk about Mm -hmm. yes talk about both of your faces shape-shifting too yes I know whenever I'm with certain friends I'm like I have to like keep my eye on them yeah, their face just changed mm-hmm. when you're looking at them so hard. I, know. I was with Debbie. We were at the beach and I'm like, I'm really having a hard time because I'm I know. looking at you and it's I don't know what's happening. I know like you're turning into a tiger. Yes. <laughs> well, that means you're so open. It's mm-hmm. a gift to be able to see those energies. And like when I walked in today and I haven't seen Lindsay in a few months, mm-hmm. you look so different to me in yeah. a really radiant way. Mm-hmm that I said when I walked in, but it's like so palpable. Mm. And Krista, you're always radiant as well. And I've been seeing you a lot. And so (laughs) I like the transformation Mm -hmm. I see, but it's it's amazing Mm. truly to watch the people that you care about just keep elevating, keep rising. It gives me chills. I I have full body chills. Yeah, I feel the same way. And I think so much of it, like, you know, this past year has been such a, profound year for us just yeah of like kind of being in those dark night moments yeah and then also coming out the other side and just feeling yeah a bit healed renewed ready to Mm -hmm. actually say how we feel Mm -hmm. you know whether it's personal lives or publicly Mm -hmm. and yeah I've definitely felt that difference on a physical Mm -hmm. physical level Yeah, with the voice, too. It's so interesting we're talking about this because last night I was in the car and I was, I've been noticing my voice is getting lower and lower. Mm. Like, I was in the car and I was, I don't know, I was singing. I was, like, singing this, like, gospel music and I was so low and I was sitting there. I was like, is my voice (laughs) this voice? You know, I'm like, hi, I'm Krista. This is Krista from the Almost 30 podcast. Or I'm, like, letting my belly out. I'm like is this my voice? Like, is this out. my voice? Like, hi, I'm Chris. Like, or it's like, you, have you guys heard Terry Gross on NPR? Yes, Terry yes. Gross on NPR. Mm-hmm. It's like, hi, this is Terry Gross. It's like, hi, this is Krista Williams. You know, kind of like, is this voice that's down here more comfortable for me now? Right. Mm-hmm. Or is it like, hi, this is Krista with almost 30. And I kind of move between. Mm-hmm. Right. And I was like, oh, wow. Am I going to move into full on Hello. <laughs> yes. I think it's really embodied. It's and crazy. It, and it really is about yes. letting, letting out the stomach. Yeah. And I realized that was a big part of like the vocal issues that I was having was that I had been sucking in my abdomen since I was 12. Yep. So yeah. one of my mom's friends told me when I was 12, if you do that, like you'll, you know, you'll strengthen your abs. You abs forever. I think <laughs> I basically just did it then oh from God. then on. And That will really (laughs) mess with like accessing your diaphragm. And um, and I do think there's a sliding scale of voice. And it's really interesting to me. I'll never forget my first plant medicine ceremony, playing with that myself and all the different voices that I have within me. Some of them very deep, like you're talking about. Wow. And some of them very high and just like all over the place. And our friend Jenna, Jenna Zoe, she posted something that I found so profound not too long ago saying, notice when you feel the need to speak in a really high pitched voice. I'm paraphrasing, but, you know, that's not your authentic self. Mm -hmm. And I think of all the times that I'm like, hi, I'm Jordan. (laughs) Yeah, honestly. (laughs) Because I'm just nervous or whatever. And I try to be so aware of that now. Or when you're like answering the phone, you're like, hi. Exactly. If you're on the phone with a stranger, like customer service, like I even try to practice that. It's hard. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, thank you so much. You're like, great. Have a great day. Exactly. Because you think people will like you better. Yes. Or it's more palatable. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And when I was getting vocal lessons, when I was auditioning for Soul Cycle, because so I got vocal lessons with a voice coach for like um, probably seven months or something. And he was kind of creepy now that I think about it. But anyways, um, another another perv, another perv on the loose. And I'm like, why am I taking off my pants? I'm just but he would be like, yeah, he'd be like, you're talking like this with your voice, like Midwest voice, kind of like this. Mm. And then we would be like. 
hello, this is Krista. You know, like that kind right. of drop in. And there's such a difference between your tongue, like the roof tongue hitting the roof of your mouth and mm-hmm. not. Exactly. That's so, it's so interesting. I was like, oh, wow. I didn't even think about that for myself. Yeah. You're reminding me of when I saw a dialect coach when I was in high school because I was doing acting and my acting teacher was like, we got to do something about your valley girl voice. It's probably why I got that in my head that that's how I talked anyway. And I used to do dialect coaching where they would have me speak in all these different accents and same thing with the tongue. I found it so hard. Yeah. I'm not an accent person. I cannot see you doing an accent. I've never nailed an accent. I cannot see you doing an accent. No. That is so fucking funny. Oh my God. And I I also want to, you know, bring in you know, your, your health journey has been one that you've been so open about. Um, and even before Lyme, but you know, when you went public about, um, your battle with Lyme, I just feel like there was this, I don't know, it was that next, next evolution. And I say that because you are so you're, you're someone that I think your audience truly is just so like in love with you no like there is just that deep deep love and so to go through that publicly and to continue to go through that publicly I can imagine is just both healing and can be hard at times especially when you bring in aspects aspects of the media which Mm -hmm. we can talk about um but yeah, I guess my question is just, I would love to talk about that journey because I know it's part of your spiritual awakening as well. Yeah, it is. It is. I'm thankful for the journey because of the spiritual awakening piece. And I really feel like anyone who's suffering with Lyme specifically on this planet right now is from the star systems and we are being called to look deeper at our life's purpose and why we came here. Mm -hmm. And we've all deviated from that purpose at some stage in our life. And I believe that Lyme, specifically as a consciousness, comes in as a gift. It doesn't feel like a gift at all (laughs) at times um, to bring you back to your soul's purpose. And that's been my experience for the last four years. So for me with Lyme, I think I've probably had it for 15 years, but undiagnosed Mm -hmm. until four years ago or three. I get the whole thing has been a time warp. I think you're right. I think it was three. And when I finally got those answers, it was beautiful to be able to share that with with my community and also to feel so validated by a doctor and by Western medicine for the first time in a really long time. And... It was a beautiful journey, and to be able to share it gave me more peace than I think it gave even others, because people are always, like, patting me on the back for doing that, and I am always saying, I couldn't have done it without my community. I'm one of the rare, lucky people who had thousands of friends from all over the world who also have Lyme, Mm -hmm. or else it can feel so isolating and so lonely And it doesn't have to be Lyme because it's very similar to MS, fibromyalgia, mold illness, all of these mysterious illnesses that are just having names now, inflammation of the brain, parasites in all the organs. It's it sounds like scary stuff because it is. And it's just my life at this point. I talk about it so much that I sometimes forget how intense it sounds to be, oh, yeah, parasites in the uterus, parasites in the brain. That's, <laughs> that's been my life. Parasites um, in the uterus. Yeah, <laughs> parasites in the heart. It's, wow. it's, so, it's so crazy. And um, I've explored many modalities to heal everything from the spiritual to the Western IV antibiotics, which people are always surprised to know that I did, but I did because... My life was on the line, and I'm not anti-Western medicine, so those antibiotics helped when they needed to help. I've done stem cells, hyperbaric chamber, water fasting, medically supervised. I changed my whole diet. I changed my whole lifestyle. I stopped working as hard as I used to work. I realized that I was a raging workaholic um, with no time for myself or my personal life or my family, 
So that had to change. And all of those things over time has helped me heal along with supplements, traditional Chinese medicine, and nutrition response testing has been amazing. Mm -hmm. And I just list all these things because I know anybody suffering might find comfort in trying some of these modalities. And ultimately, it's important to me to talk about it because it's a really underrepresented community and a really underfunded community. And why is that? Well, because Lyme is still not really recognized by the larger medical community as a whole, even though now, as of last year, there were 400,000 new cases diagnosed as you can imagine all the people who go undiagnosed at the same time because to even get diagnosed can cost thousands Mm -hmm. especially if you're working with a good doctor who knows how to read the tests so nothing is covered by insurance none of the treatments that I've ever done for Lyme except for some of the labs have been covered by insurance And I do feel like it's my responsibility as someone who's been able to try all these things to share about them Mm -hmm. so that hopefully some people out there can make it happen for them too. And some of these things are total scams. And I like to talk about that too, because I don't want people to try those things, even though maybe it could work for them. But if anything is something that you have to do weekly or monthly for the rest of your life, I'm not really about that. I feel like that's such a band-aid for the problem. So for a while, I was doing IV stem cells every month. And they would work for about two weeks, and then they wouldn't, and then I would go back in. And that was an expensive and exhausting journey. And there's just a lot of corruption, I think, in, in that whole industry because people who are sick are very vulnerable First of all, our heads aren't even on straight. <laughs> There's a lot of brain fog and devastation, and, and you would pretty much do anything. I know a, a lot of people suffering would just put their whole life into their hands of their doctor or somebody that they trust. So I feel grateful to have gone through that and then moved out of that to a place where ultimately I trust myself. My own intuition will guide me to the healers that I need, to the doctors that I need, to the modalities that I need. And I think everybody goes through those different phases of the healing. And I just feel lucky to to talk about it publicly because if I had had someone like that, other than Yolanda Hadid and Ali Hilfiger, both of whom I love, those were the only people talking about Lyme when I first got diagnosed. And Yolanda was ridiculed too, mm-hmm. <laughs> to, to, you know. That was like a whole topic of the season. Yeah. Was everyone, <laughs> I'm laughing because it's so absurd that mm-hmm. TV is like that. Oh, I know. Where it's like, is that, does she have Munchausen? Munchausen she, yeah. syndrome, right? That's so sad. It's so sad. And mm-hmm. I watched that when it was out. And then I watched it again later when I knew that I had Lyme. And I was enraged on her behalf because... It's just such a misunderstood disease and all of chronic illness is because it's chronic. So it doesn't necessarily go away, although I believe that full healing can be achieved. But chronic illness, Mm. one day you wake up and you realize after years have passed, half of my friends are gone. (laughs) And because people can't deal with something that is ongoing. Mm. And who am I anymore? And when's the last time I left my bed? And when's the last time my brain didn't feel like it was on fire? And what has happened to my career and my life? And like you go through those things. And I feel like I'm one of the lucky ones who maintained my life because I work hard. You know, I I shouldn't say that. Everybody tries. But like I just put tremendous pressure on myself to continue my business because I care about it so much. But, yeah, everything changed. It's just cr- crazy, wow. crazy times. It's so interesting. It's like we have medicine for, like, restless leg syndrome. <laughs> and that's, like, verified. You know, no shade to anyone with RLS. My sister, I think. My sister literally, I think, went to the doctor for RLS. 
Because I think when we were little, my mom would always hit her legs under the table because we'd always like oh, move yeah, our yeah, legs. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. So I think she probably has like an issue with that. Anyways, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we don't have it. You know, there isn't anything for Lyme. I don't understand. Mm-hmm. Neither do I. It's it's an epidemic. What's so? What's happening from like a medical level? Like our like like our cells attacking other cells, or do they not know? Like I don't even know. I know. I didn't know either before I was sick. So what's happening is. You get Lyme from a tick or a Mm -hmm. mosquito or a horse fly or a flea. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of scary because think of all the mosquitoes that we all come into contact Mm -hmm. with. And so um, it is an insect-borne illness that comes into your blood. And then these little spirochete is what they're called. They look, if you look at them under a microscope, like these tiny, tiny, tiny little parasites start going all over the place in your bloodstream Mm -hmm. and unfortunately because most people don't realize that they've been infected until months have passed or years have passed they just multiply and multiply and multiply and multiply and so all these little spirochete start burrowing into your joints and your muscles and your organs and they don't really respond to medication because when you medicate them they, they have this biofilm that just grows even thicker around them. So it actually can make it worse wow. to start treating Lyme with some of like the traditional treatments. The only way that those antibiotic treatments work is if you've gotten bitten by a tick and you know within the first two weeks wow. and you start wow. treating within the first two weeks. Otherwise, um, probably not the most successful path of treatment for most people, especially in the beginning, so the biofilm stuff, I am on these cystus teas that are these Chinese herbal teas that are supposed to um, melt the biofilm. And I think it, and you know, that seems to be working for me. I've just had to try so many things uh. to get into those layers. How did you, how does it show up for you in terms of symptoms? The symptoms are, for me, because they're so different for everybody, extreme chronic fatigue. I had those full body hives Mm -hmm. until I worked on getting my inflammation down, brain fog to the point where some days I just can't think. And it can also manifest in anxiety because these toxins can drop into your stomach and then you can have like a full blown panic attack, which... I started having panic attacks for the first time in my life during this whole experience. Um, And then really odd symptoms and joint pain, insomnia, depression, Mm -hmm. the list goes on. And some people could have opposite symptoms to me, and that's why it's a very confusing disease. Mm. Wow. Yeah, it's it's so crazy because, you know, and like bringing us to – to now it's like I don't see you as someone that's sick and I I haven't for a long time Mm -hmm. so when we talk about this I'm like what I know you know I'm kind of like what are we talking about because it doesn't seem like it's part of you anymore even though I know it is Mm -hmm. yeah I'm happy that you see me that way and I see myself that way which is a daily affirmation I am healthy and about once a week I'll go on the whole tangent of I'm sick and how dare this person Mm. like I'm so sick and that kind of thing and Jonathan and other key people in my life will remind me of how I'm speaking because those you know it's a really negative way to speak about yourself Mm -hmm. and before I could say I'm healthy I would say I'm healing Mm -hmm. and that was a daily affirmation and for a couple years now I haven't identified with the real real dark dark darkness of Lyme Mm -hmm. but It's because I don't let myself identify with it, even though I can have some terrible days. Mm. But mostly now I have good days and that's new. That's that's very, very new. Mm. And 2020 is as difficult as the year was, allowed me that space. And now I realize I can't go back to (laughs) the shit I was doing before. Mm. There is no for me. And I know you guys are like the ultimate um on tour travelers uh, which like blows my mind and I admire it so much but even the small level that I was doing of that I will never go back to I cannot sustain my body has spoken because 2020 2021 
health wise has been a very huge leap for me mm. because of doing nothing and because of traveling nowhere. And so that's something to think about for other people who have these chronic symptoms. What is your body telling you? I never would have known because I would have been on too many planes, committing to too many things, mm-hmm. thinking that I was saying no enough, but I wasn't. So, yeah, that's been really an eye opening part. Mm. In an uh, effort to spread awareness about Lyme, I know that um, you spoke to a journalist at one point and then there was an article written that was completely kind of opposite of the sentiment that Mm -hmm. you had expressed. I'd love to talk about that because I know it, you know, it relates to something that happened recently, which we can talk about as well, where the media completely distorted either what you said or what you expressed for some clickbait yeah that was probably one of the most disturbing things that's ever happened to me in my life I've been through a lot with the media but that was different because I spoke to this woman for hours and I asked her multiple times what is her angle because I've I've I'm a very Mm -hmm. trusting person, but I know enough at this point to ask about the angle. And it seemed like it was very unbiased and informational. And that's what really freaks me out about journalism is that they will act like they're on your side. And they should be actors because it's so manipulative. It was very much like, oh, I cannot believe what you've been through. Tell me more. That kind of thing. So I felt very safe and shared with her everything. This is how it's been. It's been so painful mentally, physically, emotionally. She was also in contact with my doctor, who is unarguably the best Lyme doctor in Los Angeles. She's treated many celebrities. She's treated, she celebrity or not, she knows what she's doing. Mm-hmm. And she was torn apart in this article. They oh, they tried, um, they, du- they dug up her past to say, this woman's an eye doctor. So what is she doing treating Lyme? Because she started as an eye surgeon and she's now a tick-borne disease specialist and she's a fucking doctor. So like, who cares? She She's dedicated her life at this point to trying to heal people who really are not healing. I think that's the job of an angel. She's an angel. And th- everything about it was so messed up because to jump ahead after opening up to her... Um, I was so excited for the article to come out. In fact, the first time I read through it, I was in such denial that I was excited about it because I was like, <laughs> this is so cool. This is New York <laughs> Magazine, The Cut, th- and they're talking about Lyme, and th- they quoted me. And then as the day went on, or the minutes went on, I was like, wait a second. What did I just read? <laughs> <laughs> total denial. Oh total denial. God. And then I read like, it again. What does my girl got to say about me? Yeah, <laughs> like, literally. And then I'm like, oh my God, she's calling me like a psychological nutcase. And Oof. tearing down the entire community of Lyme, calling it a cult, which then the New York Times picked up and did this whole thing about Lyme disease as a cult and that was the ultimate heartbreaking betrayal because I just don't know why the world is so dark and I just don't think I'm cut out for Mm -hmm. that so I don't deal with that well and I have a really thick skin because of everything I've been through publicly and not publicly but that one that was the most enraging thing that's ever happened to me so Um, also for all the other people who are suffering, who can't get out of bed, who take their own lives because this disease is so misunderstood and I've been there. Like I thought about the same exact thing. So, and I have, I love my life separate from being sick. And I've literally thought almost every day for years, it's just not worth living if this is the pain. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what's going to happen. You know, that's how I used to think. So for journalists to prey on people who, no matter how stable or unstable you are, I just think about the people out there who read that article, who have Lyme, who just thought, okay, well, I can't do this anymore because that happens every day. And I just think that media 
has changed so much Mm -hmm. and what was once 10 years ago really cool to be on good morning america and the epitome of success to be written about in some of these publications (coughs) now is is almost always some kind of salacious clickbait and it breaks my heart and I know there are good journalists out there and I hope some of them are listening right now because I do think there's enough kind-hearted journalists to start changing the narrative because it is interesting to read good news you know Mm -hmm. whatever I think it's fun to read good news Mm -hmm. um the Lime story could have been so uplifting and informational but instead it was just total lies total betrayal of the entire community Mm. and that was it was truly heartbreaking and then I said I I just have a rule to never speak with the media again because I just have no interest um unless it's about something different something totally non-controversial I don't know I just don't understand that there's no like regulation on that in any way Mm -hmm. like kind of a checks and balances and I understand that it's all you know money and power behind it and um but when it's a subject like this and the lies could be putting people's the lies could be putting people's lives in danger like I don't understand how Mm -hmm. that's not like illegal Mm -hmm. I know well the thing is it (laughs) it it is it is illegal and what's really scary which I've learned through the more recent media attack, which we can also talk about, Mm -hmm. um, is is the very fine line of freedom of speech for public, about Mm. public figures. And even if what you've said is taken completely out of context to the point where it's not true anymore, that's still legal, unfortunately, because, you know, as my lawyer had to break it to me, well, you said you said those things so I know you didn't mean it that way and this is truly heartbreaking and salacious and crazy but quote by quote you said these things even if it was totally broken up and taken out of context but there are other things that were said in in this more recent article Mm -hmm. that um, have nothing to do with me at all that have nothing pertaining to any quote I've ever said or the person that I am in my heart and that's illegal so that's helpful thankfully yeah. for the for the lime one too it's like i don't understand like there's so much more dangerous things than like a cult of people that are sick right if you want to call it a cult it's like what are they doing well cult is a very dangerous of word. course well this is the whole thing they use this is the whole fucking thing they use these words that um already have like an energetic signature to them Mm -hmm. that people recognize and know is bad so as an example they'll be like lime is a cult i know energetically that feels bad so with this energetically i'm going to associate lime and cult together you're already making your point Mm -hmm. and in the most recent article it's associating things that like things that you had said with things that already have an energetic signature that people deem to be bad conspiracy theories QAnon. All of these things, and this is what they do. They kind of lead you along this trail where they're like, this person is like this, this person is like this. They'll get closer and closer and closer to the fucking point that they want to make, which is this is a conspiracy theory. This is a QAnon thing. This is whatever. And they lead you along so that you're kind of following the trail until you believe that is true. And it's so far from the fucking truth, it doesn't even make sense. It's so far from the truth. It's so ridiculous. Like, it's just also, too, it's like, it just is annoying because it's like everyone knows from like a reductionary standpoint that like QAnon is bad. No one fucking associates with QAnon. Like mm-hmm. everyone knows that. Like no one does. But then they draw some person from all the way on the left side to all the way to the QAnon thing. And they've somehow found a thread of maybe slight comparison to something. And it's like that's not it it just is that black and white area Mm -hmm. of like this is bad so we're going to say something that we all know is bad to get you guys to agree with us on the point that this is bad because we're all in agreement that this is bad Mm -hmm. and it's the same thing when they always bring in like hitler oh my gosh if i hear another if i live another day with hearing about effing hitler it's like they're like well this reminds us of hitler days and it's like everyone knows that hitler's bad like right. everybody I mean, knows that, that he's like bad the lowest blow yes. in the world i got a few of those comments okay. i was like do you even know who you're talking to uh, they said what oh <laughs> see that's the whole thing and everyone's obsessed do you want to know everyone's obsessed with hitler 
well, they love Hitler as an example. It's I didn't disgusting. know that until now. I mean, so yeah, the article drew a conclusion that because I'm white and because I'm a wellness influencer, I'm in, I'm uh, associated with these conspiracy mm-hmm. cult groups. And um, the only thing I've ever said about QAnon publicly ever is an art- is a episode I'm really proud of with Marianne Williamson, mm-hmm. where. We talked all about it for almost the entire episode, and I agreed with her. It's dangerous. Oh, my God. You know, she taught me about it. I didn't even know what it was mm-hmm. before that. Um, and then I made a little PSA. Hey, all my listeners, I just want you to know I denounce QAnon. This shit is crazy. That was like three months ago. That's the only thing I've ever, ever, ever said publicly about that. So for the article to draw any conclusion because I'm white and I'm a wellness influencer with the right, which the writer has a big problem with, um, for that to be brought to that was just totally untrue. And then (laughs) the Hitler thing, um, I can't even believe like we are even talking about that, but someone who I went to high school with, who I think has had a vendetta for a really long time, really, um, angry soul took to my comments to fight with my followers and say, um, no, we should not be supporting women because we should have not been supporting Mrs. Hitler, Mrs. Hitler. And my, 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 (laughs) this this amazing thought. So this is a guy I grew up going to synagogue with. Did she do MRS or MIS? And I'm like, yeah, MRS, MRS. I didn't know he had a wife. (laughs) Um, So you're his second wife. (laughs) And exactly. And so my, this girl who follows me, who's so kind, and she was just like, um, I don't see what this has to do supporting women with supporting a dictator's wife. And then he, he went and deleted all the comments, but she showed them to me because I was like, I went to high school with this guy. I'm, I would like to know what he said because this makes me very uncomfortable. I mean, internet trolls are one thing. Mm -hmm. Um, People who I went to high school with is, an, is another thing. Mm-hmm. And um, anyways, like good riddance to that whole situation. But that was very painful to to know that someone, because I look at everything from a psychological standpoint. Psychologically, this this person who I went to high school with has had some serious issues with, with me and mm-hmm. others for 15 plus years. So you come and relate me to Hitler's wife <laughs> when you don't know anything about me. <laughs> and we were raised at the same synagogue. So fuck you. <laughs> like this whole thing. It was just like, please, please. That's the lowest and also, flow I've ever heard. That's the, the, so it, the internet mm-hmm. is, is, you know, the dark of the internet is like mm-hmm. people trying to evoke emotion. Again, mm-hmm. what yes. you said, using those words. So yes. when someone says Hitler, they're like, oh, and yeah. they almost mm-hmm. bypass any logical yes. or or intuitive right. feeling of like, no, it's ridiculous. Yes. Let me move on. It's Literally, so they're like ridiculous because oh. it's because it, they that's what they do. They use the one thing. They're like, um, there was an art, another article, another news piece that was written poorly about someone, um, an intellectual that I follow, and in it they said that this person's daughter reminded them of like a Trump press secretary oh my god and it was like oh so because everyone's like oh trump bad Mm -hmm. then you react to that same reaction from people where you're like oh then she must be bad yeah ultimate buzzwords ultimate Ultimate buzzwords buzzwords. and and then i also look psychologically at the writer and i always want to know what happened in your life i feel bad with with the lime writer what happened in your life that made you fear people who are sick because that that's pretty obvious or made you threatened Mm. by people who are sick or intimidated or do you feel like we're getting too much attention i don't know where psychologically that stems from and i would love to know Mm -hmm. because i'm also a very forgiving person Mm -hmm. and i'm like if you met with me face to face writer we would probably be friends like Mm -hmm. i want to know where you're coming from um, and maybe that's a fault in me because it's really hard for me to like walk away from like people and situations. And I didn't even know her to begin with, but mm-hmm. the, then the psychological piece of the writer writing about wellness being dark. Well, I know where that's coming from. She has a personal threat about wellness and light filled human beings because just because you're part of wellness does not mean that you're a conspiracy theorist. Mm-hmm maybe we just want people to be healthy i could care less what they do with many things in their lives but i hope 
that they will be healthy with food and exercise mm-hmm. and make informed decisions. Does mm-hmm. that make me a bad person? I, I didn't think so. Yeah. Um, I, I think, you know, to your point, I think a lot of people feel on the outs of wellness. They're like, oh, I'm not in the club of being well, but it's, it's something I think, yes, of course, there are aspects of wellness that are inaccessible to people, but I also think it's a general concept of taking care of one's self, both physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and I think I believe that is accessible to all to a certain mm-hmm. extent. I do too. And so it's like, this isn't like a club that you're not a part of. Mm-hmm. Like, right. this is like a God-given right is to be well. I that's the devil at work the same way that's really the devil at work because it's like you think about everything there's inaccessible parts of all life shopping think about shopping think about fashion magazines posting 700 hundred dollar pants that's inaccessible for most people that's inaccessible for me it's like why do we deem wellness to be the inaccessible thing when just like everything there's a scale most of wellness is free the very best parts of wellness is free right mindfulness water nature you know, good air, breathing, breathing. I feel the exactly. Same and so it's way. like, it really just keeps us from believing that we could make ourselves well, or we could make ourselves happy. And it really, again, just puts the power, takes the power away from everyone and makes everyone feel powerless where you're like, oh, this wellness isn't accessible for me. Like I can't, I can't be a part of it. You know, I'm, I'm never going to be able to be well, cause I don't have tons of money. And it's like, actually like we've spent all the money on everything and it's the things that I don't spend money on that really changed my life I couldn't agree more I couldn't agree more and I think about it in the sense that because my main passion is to empower people to know that anyone can be well Mm -hmm. and it is completely free and then when you get into food and stuff food is not free but there is a very affordable way to eat healthy I believe that and so that's why I mostly create all of my content around that, which is free content that I share every day that I've shared for almost a decade. So when someone tries to tell me that I'm perpetuating wellness being inaccessible, I do take offense because I'm like, what about all the free content that I share every day for the free and or affordable things that you can do? And if there's a problem at that point, why are you here? Mm-hmm. Yeah, why and let's talk here? about the healthcare system. You want to talk about w- how wellness being inaccessible? It's like, here's a girl online that's sharing her journey, sharing all of her findings, all of her information for free. Like, of course, like you get paid for some things, but, and there's things that you do that, that are unaccessible for people, but you're bringing whatever you learn to people for free. And if some people can't do it, they can't. And if some people can, that's amazing. But it's like, think about our healthcare system, like all parts of our healthcare system and healthcare is really unaffordable and unaccessible. So where's the problem with someone that's exploring alternative ways that are mostly free, sharing some ways that are definitely not free, but bringing them all to our audience for free? Or is it the healthcare system itself? Because the healthcare system is what's unsustainable. They just always attack the wrong things. It's like, what are, why are we, and it's funny too, because you are not the right target for that article because there are people that truly believe what they're saying. Oh, I know. That's Mm -hmm. how I thought. I was was like, like, there's actually people I know that believe all of the things that you're alluding Jordan to beliefs that would be potentially a fit. Oh, I know many people who post about Mm anti-whatever things Mm -hmm. every Mm -hmm. single day. And I, I don't. And I know I've never talked about it. Mm-hmm. So I did feel like it was just a very unfair fit. And I've thought a lot about this because I think certain people are targets, like more so targets in the media Facts. than others. We know this about celebrities, which is on a totally different scale. Britney Spears, Meghan Markle, Mia Farrow, Amanda Bynes. We've seen this happen so many times. Mm-hmm. And then you go into the world of influencers per se I don't even think of myself as an influencer because I think of myself as different Mm -hmm. but influencer world there's a lot of us who get called out every time something's happening that could be salacious that could be clickbait and I know I could tell you exactly who all those people are um, because it's the same people every time Mm -hmm. and I talk to those people because we're like here we are again taking legal action and feeling like shit and having people tell us that we're part of all these groups that we're not part of. And I don't know if that's because people are threatened by something specific Mm. or because um, 
you know I believe in aliens and the fifth dimension and all these things and I don't feel very human. And sometimes I think it's that. And that is sad, but (laughs) I know that it's too much for a lot of people to handle, to hear a lot of light. I do have a really positive outlook on the world. I do have a really positive outlook on my life and everything that I've called into my life and everything that is me. And I, I think people love to hate it. I think you represent, you know, a way of being and or thinking that really threatens every system that makes a lot of money off of us being Mm -hmm. skeptical, depressed, dependent just on what they provide, whether it's government, pharmaceuticals, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Like it goes on and on. And that is, I think, really, I mean, to think about, a, you know, a country where people were trusting themselves to make decisions that are best for them and a country where people were prioritizing just, you know, practices that made them feel good. I mean, we wouldn't need half the things Mm -hmm. that are, you know, provided or pushed on us in order to like feel, you know, feel good in whatever way. So yeah, I think it's threatening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it absolutely is. I mean, look at where the billion dollar industries are and it's always going to be a threat to the infrastructure of our country. It's like, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. Inaccessible. Right. Look at this. Yeah. Look at these industries that like are truly inaccessible. Right. And to just put a bandaid on everything. Yeah. And yeah, my, with you being positive, that's also been, it's interesting because we have, I have another friend, we have another friend that was, had an article written about them this year and she also, so this article, you denied talking to this person, which is important to say. Speak. So this article, my, our friend talked to this person that portrayed the article to be in a different way than what it came out to be. And so she was essentially misled, um, through the whole thing and, and the the angle was really just like so typical i like it's so cynical and it's so s- fucking boring it's like the same old fucking way to look at life where you're just like oh like you think that you're just gonna think your way to being happy like you just think you're gonna manifest your way to money you think you're just gonna drink a green juice and feel good it's like all of these like really, 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 really outdated thoughts and theories that like actually stretch beyond what the person is actually saying. So whatever is being said in the article, stretching way beyond what you're actually saying to make it seem ridiculous. Right. And and it really pulls people away from like what's actually hard in life. It's not actually hard to be cynical. It's actually very easy to be cynical. It's actually the much easier route to be a cynical person. It's it truly is. It's it's actually very easy. So it's actually much harder for people to actually be positive in life. It's it's really hard. It actually takes thought. It actually takes time. It actually takes attention. So when people go the cynical route with all these fucking articles, it's just so boring. It's like, got it. Yeah, I know. Life fucking sucks. It's hard. People are sick. People are miserable. People are all these things. It's like, okay, cool. Like, I get it. Everyone knows that. But like to go the other way and actually spread something that's different, that's going against the grain, that's positive, that's thoughtful, that's like expanding people's minds that's why influencers and sort of like the new media of instagram influencers bloggers podcasters is so popular because it's like people are sick of the old narrative yeah people are sick of it and then there's a whole other sector of people who want to keep that alive and so i think it's so threatening to them to hear about these more optimistic points of view because that me- that really just holds a mirror up to their life and mm. shows you you could also be happy be healthy you know it's not going to make life perfect but you can still be happy and if i found a way to be happy despite these chronic illnesses and this intense chronic pain every single day in my life you know, other people can too. Mm-hmm. And I think that's too much for people. Mm-hmm. And I don't care if it's too much for people. I, I don't take offense to that, but I do take offense to the bullying that has gotten so out of control. And what you said about the like the green juice and all that, if, if you ever, every article that's ever really been written about me always says something about with her blonde hair and her green uh-huh. juice and her beautiful Brentwood kitchen and all this stuff where it's like I see what you have a problem with it's very clear Mm -hmm. (laughs) so you tell me if I'm wrong but psychologically you have a distinct problem with 
something down to the very minute details of what my kitchen looks like, that's again boring. Like, are we going to focus on those details? Do they say that about men? That's my whole problem. Like, the one intellectual that this article was written about. In their comments about the intellectual, they made no mention of how he looks, but they made mention of how his daughter looks. Yeah, And I was like, oh, that's interesting. An article written by a woman making comments about another woman's looks, but the article focus about the man doesn't say anything about his looks. Yeah. So why are women's looks always brought in on articles slandering other women as a way to like further the point? It's and it's just, it's exactly, it's the fucking, it's mm-hmm. the old paradigm of the blonde, the dumb blonde, the mm-hmm. like, you know, the whatever blonde. It's like, that is literally 1980. So I it's know. So That's old. how I Boring. felt too. Yeah. And, and her beautiful Brentwood kitchen and her yoga mat and stuff. It's like, everyone you has could a yoga make mat. the most <laughs> normal. <laughs> hey, everyone has a yoga mat at their house. To make the most normal situation sound dramatic God. is literally a truly they're like a sparkling gift. countertop. Yeah, and, and Berkey in the corner. Exactly. <laughs> you're like, like, dude, what? we know what you are threatened by, Holy. writer. So it felt really good to stand up this time because this, when this happened seven years ago with Breaking Vegan. I was totally just like put into a washing machine Mm. of terror and fear. And I just was going through it for years and I didn't know how to stand up for myself. And I didn't know if I deserved to. Mm. And I felt so misunderstood and scared for my life, truly, because death threats every single day. And so with the Lyme thing, I stood up for myself. That felt good. And then with this most recent thing, I just wanted to draw an energetic boundary with the universe mm-hmm. this will not happen again this will not yeah. happen. this you're no one is allowed to use my name in that way because i'm i'm not going to be the face for wellness being dark or ridiculous because that's pretty much the opposite of what i've dedicated my entire life's work to so if this continues to happen because i obviously can't control the universe i just want the, the world to know that there's a boundary around me at this point that is yeah. so strong that um, it just doesn't fly. It doesn't fly with me because I also want to stand up for women and I want to stand up for wellness and I want to stand up for these Lyme, Lyme communities that have been so attacked. So all of it, really, which is why I decided to take legal action, which is what my whole post and my whole blog letter was about um which is really just a boundary that's like listen media you're not gonna fuck with us anymore you've done this for so long and it's only getting worse because people are really angry i've never seen the world this angry and it's heartbreaking i don't want to live in a world like that so what kind of steps are we going to take to change make solutions I'm a very forgiving person, like I said. So if this is what had to happen to take control of the narrative and just say everybody, everybody who follows me knows the truth Mm -hmm. and people who don't follow me know the truth (laughs) as as evidenced by the comments on this article itself, which were 100 percent in support of wellness. And I think people are just sick of it, just sick of of the lies yes Mm -hmm. i think i think too like you know as as hard and devastating as this was and is it's also like i think i was talking we were talking about this where it's just like this is gonna make really really big waves in terms of what we will no longer stand for as women especially and you know being in the wellness space but it just, it feels powerful Mm -hmm. and I'm really, really proud of you and just grateful that you've stood up and spoken your truth and created that boundary because yeah, so often people just feel like they have to just take it Mm -hmm. and be silent, you know, be silent about it because of either their team is saying they can't say anything because that would create more. And I'm just, I'm really thankful because I think this will Mm -hmm. be the start of, of, of change I think so too I really feel that way and now that it's a bit behind me and the emotions are kind of taken out of it I feel grateful that it happened Mm -hmm. 
which is typically how I feel after something terrible, seemingly mm-hmm. terrible happens, because it does feel like a line in the sand for me. Yes. That happened. That's not going to happen again. And the other really good thing that it brought about for me is that my energy is for me and I share everything to a fault. I, I don't have to do that. And so I want to find a way to maintain this openness with my community and better their lives by just sharing from my heart, but also keep some things for me. And I was given some incredible advice by Marianne, the medium that, that I love. And she's like such a spiritual mother to me. Mm. And she said, this happening is such a sign from your angel. So take it as a beautiful thing that no more are you going to share your light filled energy in these Places that can be really toxic. So unless there's a subject that you feel so passionately about that you have to share about it and you will because it'll come from that guided place, you don't have to speak on everything. Where I was trying to speak on everything, I do Q&As constantly every week, if not more, trying to answer the widest range of questions to serve people. But I ended up speaking on a couple things that I didn't want to really talk about or I didn't need to talk about. And then there's just endless Jordan quotes in the universe that are like, that's not protected energy. So I'm learning a lot about my boundaries Mm -hmm. and it's an ever flowing process. There's it's a, it's a very odd world that we live in. Um, new with, with the boundless Mm -hmm. technology and 50 apps to stay connected and, Thank God, Krista, you got me off of community where I was literally texting people yeah. all day long. <laughs> oh my Jordan's God. like, hey, guys, text me. I was like, hey, what are you doing? Oh, <laughs> yeah. my God. I literally was like, girl, no, no community. Oh, for yeah. <laughs> I'm like responding to people in their darkest days that of Lyme, which, which I wanted oh. to do. But I only have so much energy to go around and I need it for myself. And I also my <gasps> husband needs it, too. Yes. So mm-hmm. it, that I've learned. Yeah, a lot. you got to be careful mm-hmm. about the portals. You know, what mm-hmm. kind of portals are you opening up? Like uh, what I had to open and then close. Yeah, that's a portal you don't want to be. Mm. We only want it good is int- portals, it is good too vortexes. like and I felt felt like that about topics too and and even topics related to this article like I don't have a real opinion. I don't really and I've thought I, every time friends voice note me about it, I'm like I actually don't really have an opinion on it. I think people should do what feels good for them however that manifests in their life and I don't really feel like talking about it because I don't really I really have no thoughts on it I'm like mm-hmm. I have no thoughts and so it is something to note that you sort of like okay this is something I'm not really gonna gonna share but you know it's hard to trust the world essentially and then be like oh yeah shut you can't trust the world no because I know? trust my I felt my podcast is such a safe space mm-hmm. I can say this one one liner and I said it seven months ago to give you some context So the topic that it was about has clearly evolved over the last seven months. We didn't really know anything about it at that time. So I was speaking from a point of view of pretty much anyone who was like, I don't really know what's coming with that, but I don't know if it's for me. Well, that was seven months ago. Mm -hmm. It's very different now. So to also take a quote that far out of context Mm -hmm. is just rude. Mm -hmm. It's like we all know I'm not an expert on the subject. So it is cheap. cheap. Exactly. And like I think that journalism in that sense is is dying. And so it it feels like the grab, 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 grab. How can we get the number? I mean, you even said in in your blog post where like on every other post on this publication's Instagram, there were five comments and, you know, not very many likes. And then for this one on your article, there was thousands and thousands of comments. At least 3,500. Yes. And those were... Do you think they like that? That's what I was talking to Lindsay about. Do they like that? I mean, sadly, I think they do. Yeah. Because I've gotten messaged by a lot of journalists with good hearts saying, this is literally how we get paid by the amount of people who click over to these articles and then the ads pop up. and, And that's why they're encouraged by these larger media publications and corporations to say whatever is going to be the most scandalous, it's juicy so thing, even if it's gross. not true. It's like the tabloids. It's like... And the news. It's wow. sad. I used to trust these bigger magazines that I loved that are not tabloids, but now they're on par with tabloids and everybody can just mm-hmm. know that shit is not real. 
It's yeah. Not. Wow. Yeah, I think once you're in the space too, you're like, oh, this is just a girl that lives in New Hampshire. That's a freelance. You know, I'm not even talking about this person specifically at all, but I'm just doing an archetype. This is a girl that lives in New Hampshire that got a journalism degree, whatever, and she's a freelance and she pitches articles and writes them and that's it. And then she represents this entire brand's opinion on something. And so people are like, oh, this magazine or outlet said this. They must believe this. They are credible. They must believe that. And it's like, no, it's actually just a person. I know. Just one person that has Mm -hmm. one perspective and Mm -hmm. now they're under the umbrella of Mm -hmm. a credible organization. These are articles written by one person person that's been reviewed by maybe two or three and then they go live and they go to all these people it's like no we have to remember that these journalists are one person it doesn't mean anything more about how valid whatever the point is exactly and I don't know in that case I don't know how these bigger publications are okay with that to have one person's opinion represent that's what I was thinking I know because I know like tens of thousands of people unsubscribed at that point to that magazine or to that Mm -hmm. digital magazine or whatever Mm -hmm. it is at this point and that's not good for them Mm -hmm. because of one person's opinion so i don't know i just don't know how it all works and i don't want to know how it all works because it's dark it's dark also too it's like everything's so politicized it's like why is everything this is what the trump era brought for us is like everything is political you're a fashion magazine. You are writing about things related to politics and health. I don't know why. I don't know. I don't know what that has to do with what your magazine is about. They or have your, to be relevant. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. Or the other magazine when it was talking about the cult of Lyme. Your fashion. Right. What? Why is everyone making every single thing political it's like masks are political you know there's just so many different things that are like and I have no opinion you know that doesn't I'm not saying that masks are political in a way that's positive or negative that is completely neutral just an observation it's just interesting how everything is politicized in this weird way where and I think that's because journalism and media has noticed how big the Trump era was for clicks reads like it was thriving Absolutely. Because it was so crazy. And I feel like they don't trust people to be like nuanced individuals. Mm -hmm. So it's like, let me give you something that has that political charge to it because that's what you're going to identify because you've already labeled yourself and they don't trust people to be like, yeah, I believe in this, but then I also believe in this. And Mm -hmm. then I believe in this. And what does that say about me? Then who am I? That's Who can I relate to? Totally. What can we talk about? Totally. Yeah, that's what really scares me the most. Yeah. Is to see even the minor support that that article got for that publication to see the people who supported it. I feel they felt like they had to because I of their know. political views and because yes. of their stance that they've taken on social justice. And, and those are beautiful things. And, and I just feel so saddened by the fact that all of that now goes hand in hand yes. yeah. for some people. Yes. Although I really do believe that 99.9% of people see right through that mm-hmm. yeah. because we are nuanced individuals mm-hmm. and there's a whole larger topic at play here that we don't even have to get into about people with chronic illness having to make specific decisions for their bodies that might be different from other people, at mm-hmm. least at first. That yes. whole thing has been just totally, totally blown out of proportion mm-hmm. at the same time when it's just not safe for people with a chronic illness to do some things that other people can do that Mm -hmm. other people can blindly do and probably be fine yeah yeah and I think you know last thing I'll say is like just to be clear like our issue is not with our issue is with the using of you for the creation of a point by feeding into an archetype that has been established by culture as bad Mm -hmm. white woman wellness positive person that's exactly what so it's like okay we've all defined that this archetype is someone that we is dangerous for whatever reason you know whether if people want to believe that's good or bad so we're going to feed into that by skewing this thing so it's like the point of whatever the article they wanted to make completely 
if it's whatever they want to make could be made without you. And that's really my thing is that whatever point people can make, whatever point they want to make, they can say whatever they want to say. Freedom of speech. I believe that. But they don't need to tear other people down to really get the point across that they, they want to. They don't need to like completely detract from whatever sentiment they're trying to make by using you as a way to like make it like you're bad if you don't do what they're saying. Exactly. And I think in that in that particular case, they shot themselves in the foot because any point they wanted to make, they really didn't make at all by pulling people like myself and others into it that didn't need to be Mm -hmm. in it Mm -hmm. and to talk about to bring in so many things that don't correlate with each other when they really could have just focused on what they wanted to talk about in the first place. Mm-hmm. without the clickbait of it all yes without saying it all started with a green smoothie that's funny because the other person's <laughs> article it. that we know it it started the same way oh wow it started with the same um it's like <laughs> is this the same it writer? like sets the scene it's, yeah it's it does. Ex- exactly it, it set the, the scene. scene with the person and she was uh yeah, it just sets the scene scene in the same exact way, and right. she is one of the kindest people ever. And it conjures an emotion yes. for to some people. Yes, it does. So if it's like the green smoothie, people are like, "Oh, green smoothie and leggings." Yeah, you know, exactly. It's like, exactly. Oh, it's like, one, oh that like, has a charge. Yeah, yeah. I can't even. That's say. what makes me sad too, because I just like, <laughs> I just don't view the world that way. Of course and not. People who disagree with me, I respect them so exactly. much, and yes. so I'm just like, that's the whole thing. That's all I really am asking for in return. And and like you, I don't have an opinion on the subject at hand at all. So mm-hmm. like, there's nothing. There's no for other people. Like, and yes. the, it's it's like right. you are making a decision for mm-hmm. you, and you support other people making a decision for themselves. Right. Mm-hmm. But I and that's what's. But what's happening is like this morality thing mm-hmm. that is very divisive and distorting yes Mm -hmm. yes i feel like it's just given a lot of unhappy people more of an excuse to sit at home and cyber bully Mm -hmm. which is a huge problem huge problem i'm terrified for our future children i know except for i just think we're just gonna have to go into a society that is like moving off the grid because it's a this where it's going Mm -hmm. is terrifying yeah Mm -hmm. i agree yeah i agree so what's next? <laughs> <laughs> what is next? Yeah, what are you excited I think, about? You what's know, happening? I guess so what is our, our note, you know, to the audience and to the community is really like mm. we are smarter than than this sort of rhetoric, this sort of approach. We can say what we want to say without bringing other people down, judging others, shaming others. We can um, feel how we want to feel without making others feel less than or making others wrong. We don't need to make everything so salacious. You know, things can be what they are and how they are, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. And I think we just want to be better with the way that we treat women, and that's all women. And, (coughs) you know, I think it's interesting that it's there's the tie between – when you did breaking vegan and people are telling you to kill yourself because you don't because you eat animals so the people that want to save animals are saying they're gonna you should kill yourself the people that want to save lives are telling you you should kill yourself okay and so in this article too it's like the people that are saying they care about people's health don't care about your health and so there's always this like paradox within these situations that people need to take note of mm-hmm. that we can sort of do without. And yeah, I'm just grateful that you spoke up on it. And I obviously feel very strongly because I know you and I've known people that have many people, many of our yeah. friends that have gone through these sort of situations. And um, they are some of the most light filled, amazing humans on earth. And I think that there's a better way. Mm-hmm. I do, too. And something that I love that you said on your Instagram when this first was all happening about a week ago is that people trust people. How do I put this? People trust uh, those of us who are speaking honestly on on podcasts or anywhere else. And, And at this point, there's thousands plus people doing this, speaking from their heart every day. I trust those people before I trust any news outlet Mm -hmm, any greater news media outlet at that point and 
I'm happy because I think that that just shows that the world is going in a really beautiful direction where people can, they can listen to the people that they've grown to get to know over the period of their lives online. Yeah. I have been blogging for almost 10 years, so I do like to think that people who follow me know me pretty well. Mm -hmm. They do. And and they'll say, this is weird, but I feel like I know you. I'm like, that's the least weird thing ever. I hope you know me, you know, mm -hmm. at this point. And um, I love that trust. And yeah, it's just, it's, oh, it's just not about agreeing of on everything either. I'm just rambling at this point, mm -hmm. but I, I just love mm -hmm. the way that you put it and the way that you put it. And that's that. We just have to support yeah. women. We have to support people more. We have to stand up for ourselves as well. And yeah, and empower each other to, you know, not take everything for face value. You mm -hmm. know, when we see an article, when we see a headline, when we, you know, it's, we are really powerful as individuals. And then if we are thinking for ourselves together, I think we will actually see some shifts in the way things are happening. And so I know it's, and we've experienced it, all of us have experienced it in different ways, but when we actually take a moment and question things, you know, just a little bit, like it can be incredibly powerful and also scary. So a lot of people mm -hmm. out there are like, I don't even know what that looks like. I don't know what that would mean for me, for my job, for my family, for my relationships. What would that mean? It's a very scary thing, but I think the more of us that do it from a heart centered place and for the good of ourselves and others like I think that's kind of where it sits yes yeah, kind of yeah you know it's yeah. just it's very much I'm just really grateful because I think this is an example and wakes yeah. people up a little bit more a little bit more I think so yeah too. and sending that girl you know that wrote it just a lot of love because I feel mm -hmm. feel for her she's in a paradigm where that is her perception of what she needs to do to be paid and her perception of what needs to happen and her perception of how journalism in the world works. And um, I'm sure that she's had a lot going on ever since she wrote the article, too. So I'm, you know, yeah, we're going to love all women. We're going to love all women. And we love her. We love her for the awakening. I feel the same way. We love her for I her. thank every person who has come into my life and triggered me in such a way where no matter where it's coming from, no matter how dark I feel it is I do because I I feel deeply for people who are in pain mm -hmm. in that way and I think those who tear other women down are definitely in pain mm -hmm. and that does make me really sad yeah for her big love mm -hmm. yeah. this was fun I know this I'm was so very so fun cheers so to a new paradigm cheers yes. to your paradigm and there's a lot of people leading the way so mm -hmm. it's really mm -hmm. exciting yeah. it's shifting well Beautiful. we love you guys you have mm -hmm. our episode with jordan from four years ago <laughs> you want to have an lol moment Before. yeah honestly mm -hmm. old studio days old studio days guys. yeah and so um wild. you're at balance blonde on instagram yes. soul on fire podcast all of the things all of the things thank you guys so much for having me this was just a joy your space is beautiful. And just as your friends, it has been so cool to see you rise and rise over the last four and a half years mm -hmm. and think back to just, yeah, the original conversation we had in that studio and see where you are now and the lives that you've impacted and the beautiful conversations that you facilitate. It's forever one of my favorite podcasts to listen to. Aww. So we love I'm you. I'm just so proud of you guys and I love you guys so much. We love, love you. you. All right, guys, we'll see you soon. We love you very, very much. Food for thought always. Take it or leave it. I hope we inspired you. Have a great day. Love you. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.